Hi, the 14th of May, 2022. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel and make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com and go look around as to what I've been working on. Quite a, quite a few things, obviously. So anybody who has heard of Enron, I don't know how many people have. Um, I was born and raised in New Jersey and grew up going to the tri-state area during the 1980s and 1990s, which would be in the specific time frame of how anybody who knows anything about Enron would know. And so there are many facets and many factors as to how Enron became, well, as well known as it had. If it wasn't for certain situations that had occurred, well, um, Enron wouldn't have been as well known. It's actually because of the situations regarding the different factors that Enron became as big as it did. If it wasn't for certain situations, Enron wouldn't have expanded as much as it had. And that has to do with a multitude of factors. So in this particular situation, for this particular official YouTube video of mine, I'm gonna go over one of many factors because as a child of someone who had worked in his own jewelry business and had been certified by the School of Bulova to work on Rolex watches as well as Bulova watches and Movados and Seikos and all of those different types of clocks such as grandfather clocks and grandmother clocks, those extremely intricate clocks that you can hang on a wall that has even more additional pieces to take care of. And a child of someone who worked at Prudential as an information technology software engineer. More so along the lines of the first portion because of having to go to the different areas as to the five boroughs of New York City. Well, there's a lot of word on the street sort of situations that you get to learn about in the five boroughs, if you know who to speak with. And then there's my babysitter's husband in reference to the World Trade Center and World Trade Center Plaza in reference to the director of security. And so those particular aspects as to the word on the street sorts of situations I grew up with that. I grew up learning about that. And I put those pieces together as a child. So I used to really enjoy reading the Asbury Park Press each Sunday because I would read these situations and I'd relay to my biological father and biological mother, oh, well, there's this situation and this situation and this. And their responses were, well, what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> there's, there's word on the street of this and word on the street on that. And where people at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church wouldn't have the slightest inclination. Because why would they? Especially in reference to youth group. I was made fun of for being considered as sheltered because I didn't grow up watching pop culture the way they had. If you really take the long-term view, ish, because it's not really long-term, though could be considered as, for some, 
Well, realistically, I suppose long-term depends on your perception of long in time. And so there were these multitudes of situations in the 1980s and 1990s that only if you had certain connections would there ever be any details that you'd personally know. It is a situation regarding, yes, the auditing in the IRS. That was a portion of the situation. That, that was one aspect, which was a lot. There's no denying that. Um, there's also the situations as to law enforcement. That was a big situation regarding that. Mainly local law enforcement, some state law enforcement and some federal, but the majority of situations regarding the Enron crisis had been because of local. And the local in regards of not family members that actually had a length of time in law enforcement, the family members that had political affiliations, that was a big deal in reference to how Enron became the situation that it was. And then there were the aspiring individuals that had wanted to become elected officials. Then there were the aspiring individuals that had wanted to be celebrities at both sides because the elected officials, that is one type of celebrity. But then there's the Broadway celebrity. There's the, I know there's something in Rockefeller, Rocker, is it Rockefeller sense? Rockefeller? So there were, there were those. Um, there were a few others regarding obviously in reference to sports and those factors, but there was also the fashion district. The fashion district in New York City, well, that's, that's kind of massive. Then there's the types of dance and so on and so forth. And the operas, which are a part of Broadway, but not. The symphonies as well. And so there were a lot of situations that, depending on how it fit together, depended on certain situations. And so I can go into all sorts of factors as to the direct connections to Enron because, well, I was a child at the time and word on the street. And so then there were the news outlets and certain types of individuals. This is where it actually started regarding Enron if you trace things back, if you know where to. The moment that certain officials that were not elected officials, but wanted to, that had begun contacting news organizations to try to kibosh certain things, that was the moment that sparked Enron. That was the beginning. That was the catalyst that started Enron. And when I say started Enron, I don't refer to the company. I refer to the specific problems that ensued because of Enron had been a, and it still is, it's an energy company. It's it deals with electrical power grid factors. It has to do with not just that, the technology and computing devices. So you have my biological mother who worked at Prudential and then doing the information technology software designing of engineering. Then you have my biological father go into different areas of different individuals in the five boroughs. 
and those connected situations, including out to Staten Island and Long Island, of course. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania as well. And so the catalyst for Enron was when these political aspiring individuals didn't necessarily want to be in the elected, though wanted to control the elected. Those individuals who had started uh, pulling the strings of news organizations in the area. That is the catalyst that kicked off Enron. That was the starting point where Enron started having the notoriety to a degree, but not to the level of. Not, not until the mid to late 1990s is when Enron really started being known because there were so many situations that occurred and in just one company, just one. There were a lot of connected factors, of course, to Enron. There were so many different employees and families and businesses in an indirect way, about six, seven degrees outward was how far that most situations regarding Enron had been. And so in one particular situation, you had what's supposed to be considered the consenting adult lifestyle. Supposed to be consenting. It's also supposed to be considered as the adult lifestyle, tr which translates to above the biological age of 18 years old. That's what consenting adult lifestyle translates to. Well, I knew a few people, one or two, hundreds. <laughs> so there was, and I'm going to go into certain factors over different official YouTube videos of mine for these references. So there was an old school pro that had a non-pro relationship and she was in New Jersey. She met this guy who wasn't looking for the pro aspect, didn't want her to be pro anyway. She wasn't really a pro to begin with, though she was professional. And so he had arranged where she could have her comfort and her house and he would stop by and they would have their talks. They would go over the situations as to. She'd go to wherever she'd go to. And, um, and he didn't really mind. It wasn't something that bothered him until there were certain situations that occurred. So there were these younger individuals and she wasn't very, she was old school, but she wasn't older. So she was essentially around her thirties in this time frame. And in her thirties, she doing her own thing, keeping him up to date on quite a few factors, not necessarily a handler situation, but kind of along certain factors of and there were these situations that started occurring because of these younger ones. Not only were they younger, they had absolutely no experience. They had no idea what it was to actually be professional, let alone actually be a pro, <laughs> because you actually have to be professional. And so those particular individuals, they had not paid attention to that supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle part that biologically above the age of 18, they didn't pay attention to that. So a group of these people, word on the street was, there were a few that were looking at aspiring into the political specter. And then there were those who were not really wanting to do the 
aspects of, but they wanted to be involved with business. So the males had their girlfriends or spouse or whatever become pros in the what is supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle. The ones that were aspiring to become elected official types or in news media or whatever it was, and these other ones, well, they weren't paying attention to that supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle, that biologically above the age of 18, at the very minimum. Others in the lifestyle, and I've gone on about prior aspects as to the old guard in reference to leather. Now, leather used to not have a problem with pros because pros in the way, 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 way back when, they didn't have issues. They were allowed to learn certain things because People in leather understood. They had, the, and when I say leather, I and old leather, when this wasn't an issue as much, it was before television. It was before movies. It was before pictures. So the old guard in reference to the leather didn't have a problem with professional or pro dominatrix or pro whatevers, so long as they had ethics. That was the really big contingency for individuals in the leather community to allow these professional dominatrix types because for a very long time, it was just they were professional prostitutes instead. And so there were these professional prostitutes who had wanted to expand their business because it was as it was. And so the leather individuals allowed some of these individuals to be taught. They allowed it under certain contingencies because if these individuals did not follow these contingencies, they would not be allowed unless there was essentially a reckoning that would clear everything out and start it over in a reset, but it had to be done in a certain capacity. It could not be done where any professional was actually involved because of the prior problems, because of the prior situations. So back in the time frame of where it wasn't really looked down upon in reference to BDSM. It was as it was, you had whatever, but you know, as long as you kept it behind closed doors, it was as it was. Whatever was what you enjoyed is whatever you enjoyed. That was that. It wasn't really looked in a certain way upon. It wasn't really a here or there situation. It was just, oh, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know, what they do behind their closed doors is whatever they do behind their closed doors. That's, that's how that is. If they agree to it, well, whatever, who cares? Sort of thing. Well, these professional prostitutes essentially had wanted to expand themselves in a different way, of course. And so they started getting involved and they essentially annoyed two different groups of people. They annoyed the LGBTQ community, or at that time, just the gay community is what it was called back then, gay leather. They annoyed them. They wanted in on what the gay leather guys were doing because they saw certain things. They wanted to emulate certain factors and bring it out where it'd be, you know, more accepted. If they had just the right type of person to put that into place. Not really paying attention to certain factors. I'm sure maybe there's a 
actress or some sort of model somewhere who could probably be referred to for this. When it got to a certain point, but there were probably, depending on the time frame of the possibilities, probably about 20 years before, 10, 20 years. And so they had essentially annoyed the gay leather scene, which <laughs> this is true, the gay leather scene, they were more open-minded compared to the heterosexual leather scene, which the heterosexual leather scene didn't have a problem with the gay leather scene because the heterosexual leather scene learned from the gay leather scene. It was a, it was a it was a time frame where they both really were forming at the same time. And then while there were the heterosexual, because there are those that are just straight, they're just it's not that they're breeders per se, as <laughs> as only certain guys would know, but you know. Um, <laughs> And that doesn't translate to biological males as far as guys. That's an East Coast term. Not getting into the gender issues because I've known some guys that I refer to, but they're really biological females. And so <laughs> it's also in Latin. In Latin um, and other languages, when you refer to multiple groups of people of various genders, it's always in the male factor. Always. Because all you have to do is look at, in reference to the state of Texas, you have a few Hispanics in the area. They can explain to you in reference to OS compared to AS. Not the Democratic part where you have a second S on that. <laughs> because that's what the symbol is for Democrats. Just pointing that out there. Just gonna throw out that hypothetical. <laughs> sure, you know, I mean, and then if you wanna take in consideration as a side note, um, so in, in when I woke up from my coma, <laughs> After my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, I can make a joke about that. This is completely a joke. Being sarcastic, though, I am gonna, I am gonna point out certain symbolic references that kind of, you know, you kind of can't really ignore because it's there. So there were these guys when I was in medical hold unit, and I didn't believe about Boys Town. I believe it. I heard the guys talking about it and I was like, no, -uh, no way. Uh -uh. And being the 17 year old that I was and everybody's essentially, I was like a little sister to everybody because I was 17 years old and I didn't graduate basic training. <laughs> And if I wasn't like a little sister, I was like a daughter to some. And I mean, yeah, there is there is the difference in regards of biological situation. So I was like a, not necessarily like a half sister or whatever, you, you know, in certain regards or adopted or whatever in that capacity. <laughs> so there's not the biological portion, but there are certain factors you take in consideration. So, you know, Little 17 year old awake from a coma, however, <laughs> however many weeks. <laughs> this is bef this is before the rave, by the way. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clarify in reference to CID. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't have my own vehicle at that point in time, so you know. That's not my, so, you know, that if there was a wondering as to how I got there, well, obviously I didn't have a car to go to Austin. How would I have a car to go to Nuevo Laredo, Mexico? <laughs> Same thing, but not, although certain, certain aspects. So I didn't believe <laughs> when these three to four males in medical hold unit were talking about this show. I didn't believe it. Dead end. There was no way that that could actually be a thing. And then I was educated because I saw it. And you know, being the being the you know, 
<laughs> being the, the person that I am and was, you know, so I obviously didn't know anything about my headaches or migraines, had no idea how that was. Um, I just knew I was in pain all the time. <laughs> And then all the medications that I had been prescribed that I have no idea as far as what to do at those times because, you know, I was the however many weeks a week from my coma at that time. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> they hadn't started teaching me the names of colors yet. Yeah. <laughs> How could that go wrong? <laughs> well, let me tell you. So... <laughs> I can laugh now because I'm alive that's 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 part of how I can laugh obviously for this lecture and so <laughs> this whopping 17 year old learns that the donkey show was real and I couldn't unsee it so you know in my infinite wisdom being the you know, hardcore <laughs> in comparison to like all the other stuff. <laughs> Cerveza. <laughs> si, uh, corona? <laughs> si, si. Chiquita. Si, yeah, uh huh, that was how hardcore I was. <laughs> I totally slammed that Chiquita beer, let me tell you. Totally did. Drank that whole <laughs> like three and a half ounces of beer. Was so drunk too. I really was. I was a drunk little fairy. <laughs> Littering around Boys Town, Mexico. <laughs> Which then there's a different reference. <laughs> because there are some in a different capacity. <laughs> Nonetheless, so, you know, there are certain situations in the supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle scene in the state of Texas. And I'm just going to put this in this perspective of however that is viewed. Um, I was made fun of for being a Republican. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so all of these Democrats and the years of 2008 through 2012 had certain issues and they didn't pay attention. Probably even to this day in 2022, they probably didn't take in consideration that um, symbol <laughs> regarding that. And I can make the joke of being a Republican. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I uh, can make a joke in reference to these straps right there on my corset. <laughs> <laughs> Cleanest joke and yet dirty. I thought, and well, is it dirty or is it naughty? <laughs> Nonetheless, I got my straps on. Mm hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> And so, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> because you know, if you can handle certain <laughs> references to that capacity, literally, in regards to the, I'm just gonna <laughs> leave it at the situation regarding, um, you know, elephants are kind of big. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, as a biological female, and I brought this up in the MEP station in 2000 when I was 17 years old, I can get something to strap on if that's an issue. And so apparently I can make the joke. <laughs> and for those who know how certain type of um, <clears throat> um, waistband areas would go, this is pretty apropos. <laughs> it's a little bit high though, you know, um, it, it, it's supposed to sit on the, the hips a little bit. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm speaking from experience 
what I'm saying is my purchase history would be capable to speak for that. And so, <laughs> and I can also make the joke in regards of certain dancing when, uh, um, and <laughs> to tell you frame up, well, I'm just saying, you know, you know, I know how to, <laughs> grab a hold of someone's hips and um, you know it is what it is <laughs> I'm not saying that that's any um, whatever I am saying though in the LGBTQ P aspects you understand what a top is so you know <laughs> how you doing boys but I know I know I know And so, <laughs> this little drunk fairy was running around in Boys Town, Mexico. <laughs> Hi, CID. <laughs> Possibly you did not know that <laughs> until later <laughs> so you know <clears throat> I didn't drive the car and you know I I didn't say anything either so you know <laughs> if that wasn't learned until either one um, when I published through my registration of Library of Congress books that was just uh, 14 years that I didn't say anything at all. And um, so, <laughs> yeah, there's my journal blog, The Ornery PSA. On my website, www.susanbeeling.com. So all of those individuals who you know, not until 2019. Mm -hmm. So, um, not until 2019 did I ever actually specify anything by technicalities. And so let me add this little additional aspect. <laughs> so it was Marksbury and Nesbitt and Burgess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't remember the other guy. Nonetheless, that's... <clears throat> Not until. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. So, while uh, some people, hypothetically, because I was accused of it in the year of 2011, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Didn't ever do that because I knew better. So, in comparison, so, you know, but hey, I, I'm a Republican. <laughs> and the issues as far as the irony to Boys Town and why I had to see it. And when I saw it, well, I still haven't unseen it. So <laughs> there is that. <laughs> and that Chiquita beer did not help. <laughs> Nope. Yeah, I didn't know what a hangover was. I just thought it was another day <laughs> as far as my headaches and migraines from the time of waking up. But you know, that is as it is, you know. Well, well anybody who deals with that understands. So then, <laughs> what can I say? So other than the truth, that's pretty much it. Just the truth. <laughs> So in reference to Enron, um, up in New York City, there were these individuals who weren't paying attention to that supposed to be consenting adult lifestyle, meaning the translation of above the age of 18 years old, biologically. And there were certain groups that were trying to get the age limit reduced 
And that became a very big problem because they were a part of these particular groups of aspiring individuals because they didn't see anything wrong with it. And yet there was a lot wrong with it. And so there were these situations that started developing in the company of Enron, where a lot of people were having issues. So the going back to the historical situations in reference to professionals in regards of prof the, the professional prostitutes that wanted to expand their business in regards of the pro-dominatrix is what it's called. And then the difference between the leather community and the professional dominatrix was this breaking point where the professional dominatrixes were not paying attention to what is considered consent as well as what is considered a biological adult. Because even though back in the time frame right before the split, it wasn't really noticed per se because of the life expectancy. However, certain parents started having certain issues, be rightfully so, because they didn't want their children to deal with that. Those types that were not paying attention to the facts of were because of these professional prostitutes that became professional dominatrixes. And where the leather community couldn't handle that because they were already dealing with what they were dealing with. They were already going through what they were going through. And so some of these professional prostitutes that turned professional dominatrixes got involved in what they chose to get involved in. And while some law enforcement agencies claimed to have certain what have yous, they did not allow certain things to go forward because of those professional um, dominatrixes, literally that caused these problems. And so while they thought they had certain things in the bag, they didn't know about other situations that did not have them covered at all because of their choices. And so a lot of laws, especially if you take a look at the time frame, I wouldn't, I'm sure there's probably a few models or actresses that would be a reference point to the specific decade of that would be the time frame that the split between old guard leather, whether in the LGBTQP terminology now in 2022 or just the gay leather community back then and the heterosexual leather community both just no as far as the professional dominatrixes because they weren't adhering to the standards those in the actual lifestyle they had their rules their morals their ethics and despite what would be considered as whatever regarding the consensual adult aspects, these professional dominatrixes didn't care. They didn't see anything involved that was important about that. And so in the, because well, they, most of them didn't even have children of their own, and if they did have children of their own, these professional dominatrixes didn't pay attention. And so in the 1980s into 1990s, there were a few that had become professional, not professional dominatrixes though. They were just professional. And while these individuals would be capable to go anywhere, these professional dominatrixes couldn't. They weren't allowed to because of the connotations behind that and it was going to either be where things were clarified and verified or it was going to be where it was permanent and it was up to ironically not the leather community 
the professional dominatrixes. That's where it was going to be left up to. Because if they chose to continue on that same path where they knew they were supposed to make sure there was actual, genuine, informed consent, especially in the New York City area, where in that time frame after the 1980s into the 1990s and what was occurring regarding that epidemic, professional dominatrixes were supposed to be considered a higher caliber, ironically, which was a problem in the LGBTQ community because why would you consider them in a higher category in comparison to the LGBTQ peers, especially with the fact that the LGBTQ peers were the starting point that taught these professionals as far as these dominatrixes and allowed them to do certain things in comparison. Whereas the heterosexual leather wasn't really here or there. They didn't really care one way or another, but they didn't not care. They were kind of that middle ground where unless it impacted them, unfortunately, um, but unless it impacted them, they didn't see any importance. The LGBTQ P leather kept screaming at the heterosexual leather. It was as it was, because in the heterosexual leather, you had a mixture. You had the heterosexual leather that would go to events, and you had the heterosexual leather that sometimes saw a professional. Well, see, that was the problem those references and, and professional dominatrix, I should clarify, in comparison to professionals. So in regards of during Enron, there were several individuals, whether LGBTQP or hetero or whatever, that were in the lifestyle. They were known to be certain individuals, whatever. It's just they were known. That's it. You, you could not say anything negative about them. If you did, it was as it was. And it was also known that they were the voice to the community because of just how they were. And so in the New York City community, you had certain males and females didn't matter whether they were LGBTQP or heterosexual breeders, they were just the voice. They would listen to the people and they weren't elected in any capacity, but they would speak to the overall community. They would let them know that there were certain things that were going on that were important for others to pay attention to. The LGBTQP, just as similarly as the hetero, they had their individuals that were as such. And they didn't overstep the line. They usually were far more reserved than <laughs> what they could have been. And when Enron became a thing, it was because of these professional dominatrixes that thought that they would do better, speaking for everybody. They thought that they would be capable to speak for everybody in the community because they thought they were actually the same when they weren't. Those who know about old guard stuff and have been connected in that capacity, whether or not they knew, hypothetically, they had a certain energetic sensation within them of their own different type of ancestry in that capacity. And so in that hypothetical, in regards of energetic portions, in the New York City area, you had people who just kind of took a step back because they weren't willing to put themselves on the line, whatever aspects up, which, you know, it does go to that saying during World War II, so then you have the other factors in reference to um, people who would. 
And the people who would say something, they dealt with their own stuff because those professional dominatrixes didn't care. They thought they knew better. They thought they had understanding and what they didn't realize in the community was that those professional dominatrixes regarding the Enron crisis had only watched something on a video. They didn't have any actual training in comparison to the prior times. All they did was see something and then, oh, that's good enough. That's a good enough whatever. That's enough in comparison. So there were a few people, they had their whatever's purchased in regards of whether it was a house or um, a condominium flat or whatever that were as they were. And it was as it was. It was discussed between, from what I was informed, because word on the street. So what I was informed were, that was discussed. And when I say word on the street, I actually did speak with some of these females and males as to different apartment locations that were specifically designed in a certain way. And their guys, however you put it, their guys made it known. They didn't ever hide it. That was the difference between the Enron situation because the ones that hit it were the professional dominatrix types that were causing these problems. And so those professional dominatrix types that didn't take in consideration these other guys, because why would they? They were as they were. They were the same types no matter what. If they didn't have the capacity to actually think about things, then they were just going to be as they were going to be. So these young ones come in. They're in their early 20s, maybe mid-20s, in comparison to some of these old guard, not necessarily older, individuals. However they were involved is however they were involved. And these young ones, being up in the New York City area, see all the glitz and glamour. They see all the Broadway stuff. They saw all of the different statues as far as the different, uh, so they, you know, the ads. They'd see these huge, massively large, different ads. And so they thought to themselves, that was the only way they were going to ever succeed, is if they became as large, as huge. The irony had already been done before. This is what was the catalyst in reference to the old guard. Why the old guard said, nope, nope, not gonna, not gonna ever, ever, in regards to those professional dominatrixes because while there were those who were willing to assist and actually bring forward an actual bridged pathway, these professional dominatrixes thought that they knew what they were doing. They thought they could actually bridge a gap when they didn't even know the language. They thought that they knew what they were going to do was going to be so important and yet they failed to ever take in consideration certain things, such as specific ethics. So at certain dungeons in New York City, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia, they would sometimes allow professionals to use it. They would have whatever training sessions, but those professionals not ever allowed to events on the weekends. Sometimes they would only if they were in a relationship, only. It couldn't be one of their clients. It couldn't be one of whatever. It could only be in the known capacity that it was an actual relationship. That was the only time they were allowed. If they had shown up on their own and not in that relationship, everybody wanted to know why.
because they're a professional dominatrix. Why are you here on the weekend? Why are you in this area? Who do you think you are stepping in to our community? Because that's how it was in New York City. What do you think you're doing? What makes you think you are good enough to actually be involved? Because while there was some that went back and forth, there were those who were misunderstood, misrepresented, and a few other factors in comparison, which over time, these clarifications occurred, but it took time, it took years to clear that out because some of these professional dominatrixes would lie and tell some of these other areas that, oh yeah, no, they're a part of this. Oh, they're this, when they weren't ever. They weren't ever in any capacity, in any way, in those levels. They caused a bunch of problems in regards of, because those particular professional dominatrixes didn't see the rest of the lifestyle. They didn't pay attention to how that went. And because they didn't pay attention to that and how that went, in the reference of people who were a part of Enron, that were in the lifestyle, which is very different than going to a professional dominatrix, the people who were actually whatever level of, whatever connection to, whatever of whatever, they were impacted because of those professional dominatrixes. They thought that they knew better. They thought that because they had the capacity of somebody who would, oh, well, go ahead and take my arm and I'll make you feel special for the night, sort of thing, in comparison to what it actually was to be in the lifestyle. And so, these professional dominatrixes that got involved and started as professional dominatrixes compared to professionals. Because the difference between a professional in the lifestyle and a professional dominatrix is literally in the word. The professional dominatrix will only do certain things. They can speak about what they do but they cannot speak for the lifestyle ever because especially if they begin in the lifestyle as a professional dominatrix, they have not ever had a point in their life in the lifestyle where they weren't a professional dominatrix. A professional in the lifestyle, on the other hand, gives the respect where respect is due. They are going, especially in the, in the New York City 1980s, 1990s, which yes, I can acknowledge certain references to certain similarities in myself, but again, I haven't ever hidden that I was born and raised in New Jersey. Haven't ever hidden that. I've acknowledged that. So in regards of Enron, and individuals word on the street stuff because word on the street was different than the professional dominatrixes. The professional dominatrixes were getting involved with the news and causing problems because of that. When Enron broke, it was a cleaning of the house regarding each and every one of those because of what problems those individuals caused. So I'm sure that, and I know that it went across the country. I know that for a fact. I don't know the exact names or anything, but there were those in this reference that uh, from East Coast to West Coast regarding these situations. And so these professional dominatrixes, or if you wanna call them, escorts or if you want to call them professional prostitutes or whatever terminology of these females and males but mainly females had gotten involved the males and females that were involved with enron these professional dominatrixes didn't care about they didn't count them 
in the lifestyle in the exact same way that they weren't counted in the lifestyle. That was the situation in the 1980s and 1990s that they didn't pay attention to if you knew anything about Enron. So if you knew about Enron, as far as those factors were, any female specifically, because in the LGBTQP way, as far as that, there is not the same in the professional dominatrixes. Because even though you have LGBTQ peers that were in that, they are not in that same capacity as biological females in the professional dominatrix because they weren't taught the same way in reference to the LGBTQ P or terminology of. Wasn't ever a thing because the females biologically that didn't learn weren't ever taught in any capacity of, didn't have the way to actually learn. There were those who made attempts to assist these types, but nine times out of 10, these types thought that they knew better, wanted that glitz and glamor and all of those little trinkets, but didn't ever pay attention to the reality because of the Enron situations. Because again, Enron is much more than just the electrical company. It is much more than that because you have the transformers, which yes, are part of the electrical portion, but transformers additionally take care of more than that, such as crosswalks, such as street lights, such as street lamps, as well as buildings. So it's not just and run as far as electricity. It also runs other fiber optics in comparison to just whatever some people think it does. It's just the facts. So these individuals, as far as their lack of concern to the larger lifestyle portions, didn't matter as far as what type of event didn't matter as far as what group or whatever. They wanted their, in the more modern terminology of clout. That's what they wanted. They knew that there were always going to be younger coming in and that was another problem to them because they didn't pay attention to that. And so while they chose how they chose, individuals who were in the lifestyle proper, who paid attention to consent being important, paid attention to the biological above the age of 18 being considered as adults. Didn't matter what type of business they ran. They could have an exotic dancer club, they could have a strip club, they could have a swinger club or a dungeon where it was paid attention to 18 years old minimum to be considered a biological adult and above, they were literally above board in comparison to certain ones of these. And so some of these professionals that were just professional in the lifestyle, they might give a lecture, they might have a class, they might even have a demo in certain ways, didn't make them a professional dominatrix, but they were professional. They handled things in an extremely professional manner. And if they had to, if they had to get down and dirty and nitty gritty and whatever, nine times out of 10, you didn't see it coming. Because those who know about the individuals, as many people as I've heard, you know, I know how people are from New Jersey. It's, no, you don't. Not unless you learn the hard way. That's the only way you actually know how someone is from New Jersey. Otherwise, that sort of stuff, the only, the only way you learn that is through learning that and being edumacated, as far as that's concerned. Because those types, that don't pay attention to those factors of the generalized lifestyle, they don't see that. So in the New York City area, compared to Pittsburgh, compared to Philadelphia, 
There were certain similarities, but in New York City, it was the most prevalent. That's why Enron is really most well known in the New York City and New Jersey areas. You have some areas of Pennsylvania that have known about Enron, but they didn't learn about Enron until afterwards. Not until it was actually published in some of the newspapers as it started rolling out, did anybody in Pennsylvania really start knowing about Enron. Whereas in New Jersey and New York, it was known. There were people who knew, well other than myself, that knew about Enron. You said the name Enron and you had one of very few responses. One, what level do you work at? Two, who do you know and what level do they work at? Or three, you didn't piss any of them off, did you? Did you piss one of them off? Because that was usually the responses when it came to word on the street. Because if you pissed one of Enron off, as far as the work that was going on, these all these factors, if you got in any way of what was going on with Enron, and you weren't assisting, and you were causing problems, well, the third option was, well, why are you doing that? You do know that Enron is as Enron is. And so, it was a very heavy amount of work that went on just to get Enron going. And when these different factors started getting involved because there were these guys who were making hand over fist cash. I mean, you want to talk, Wall Street, they know about this, but not to the same level of Enron regarding certain factors. There were guys who were investing in Enron, but there were other situations connected too. So they were making hand over fist money. And so you have certain individuals that just, they wanted something they didn't necessarily want it to what have you but they weren't sure how to actually approach the lifestyle they knew some people existed that weren't professional dominatrixes and yet they went to professional dominatrixes instead otherwise they went to the lgbtqp usually because the heterosexual types, they were kind of left in the middle. And so where certain ones, especially the professional, but not professional dominatrixes, the professional individuals of old guard lifestyle stuff, they started working to actually make a pathway for the heterosexual leather aspects. Instead of being considered one way or another, they started opening up doors. So that way in the LGBTQP capacities, they would see that, yeah, okay, they're breeders, but you know, they're not gonna, you know, in those capacities. They started opening that. So that way others could actually take that step forward. Maybe they didn't get involved to the same level, but they were capable to actually ask questions, actually educate themselves, actually learn what certain aspects were in comparison. This did not sit well with the professional dominatrixes in New York City because they wanted to be a key holder when they didn't have a key or a hole or anything to begin with. They wanted to ride the coattails, especially the young ones, because they saw the Broadway, they saw the glitz, they saw the glamour, they saw all of these ads, these billboards all over the place. They wanted to see themselves on that because of whatever reference of whichever model or actress. They thought that they were at that same level just because they could put some clothes on. 
just because they could say a few things, just because they could stand a few ways and it was something kind of close enough in comparison. And sure, there were those who knew how to wield certain things. Others did not. And so when the others who did not know how to wield those things and the ones in regards of having given classes, having given demos, having given lectures and all these factors, these professional dominatrixes didn't see any value to that. They couldn't see any value because why would they? These professionals in the lifestyle were just educating. That's all they saw it as, just educating. Nothing of actual importance, no true value. How important is education anyway? Because in New York City, everything is about how you look in comparison. And it's not really, that's the facade. That's what wasn't understood by these ones that would travel. This is where the majority of these came from, is they came from whichever city of whichever state, whichever area, and they thought that they were gonna make it big on Broadway. And when they didn't, because of whatever, they went the way they did. Some went into exotic dancing, some went into whatever of whatever, some just decided they were just gonna work. And that was it. They were going to earn their way up of whatever in that capacity. It was as it was. It's just how it is. Some of them went to school. Some of them went whichever way. It's common sense. And then there were the professional dominatrixes. And not all of them. Because even within the professional dominatrix aspects, there were those who had their limits. There were those who paid attention to what is considered consent and abided by that. There were professional dominatrixes who paid attention to the biological age as to above the age of 18 as to what was considered an adult. And they adhered to that. These other ones that came in, they didn't want to pay attention. They gave the professional dominatrixes of the old time that had already worked their whatever, and they were cool with the LGBTQ peers. They were cool with the leather aspects. They weren't in the same level, but they didn't really seek it anyway. They accepted themselves for who they were in comparison to some of these young ones. And so sometimes some of the old guard professional ones, as far as dominatrixes, tried to guide these. And in the 1980s, you had all of these yuppies on top of everything else with the Enron stuff. And you had all of these yuppies from the 1980s that went into the 1990s, along with all of this Enron stuff. And so you had these professional dominatrixes that worked with the dungeons and they started warning these dungeons as to some of this. It upset these young ones that they would actually be spoken against because why? Going and doing the pretty glitz and glamor, isn't that good enough? So these warnings started going towards these dungeons because you are the ones who are paying the insurance fees. You are the ones that are housing this. You are the ones who are going to deal with it if you don't get these types in check because that's what they are. And so you even had professionals in the lifestyle that weren't professional dominatrixes. They were just professional in who they are or who they were 
depending on because of the time frame. And again, this can't just be in New York City. I'm sure in other areas at other times, there are the capacities, though I'm referring to Enron. And I'm sure that there are some who survived the Enron situation. So these individuals stirred up all these problems, didn't pay attention, and thought that they could actually do what they wanted. Thought this. And when Enron started really stirring, really spinning, really getting forward more and more and more and more, the news could no longer push it off to the side. Because at first, well, you know, so what, it's connected to Enron. So what, it's connected to Enron. So what, it's connected to Enron. Until they couldn't do that anymore. Until it was just so much that if they were to hold it back any further, there was going to be somebody else who broke the story of Enron. And while, yes, there are those who know that some, yeah, you know, I mean, you have NBC and MSNBC, you know that they're a part of the same whatever, but not necessarily. But there are other media sources. There are other aspects of different types of newspapers at those times. You have different companies that were developing. You have also, so in, uh, in San Antonio, you've got the San Antonio Current. But you also have the San Antonio Express News. Well, the San Antonio Express News would be the equivalent of, in certain references, of the Asbury Park Press. The San Antonio Current would be the equivalent of the up and com comers in that particular reference. Because these situations regarding Enron, though in a different time frame, you couldn't hide it anymore. No matter what, all of these situations, that one after the other, after the other, after the other, and word on the street was it was gonna burst wide open as to each and every aspect of, because these situations regarding, especially when it came to the lifestyle, that was the last straw because when that came as the way it did, that was it. Because those professional dominatrixes caused problems to other guises, non-professionals in that capacity, but were professional in the lifestyle, made things welcoming for people, handled situations that other people didn't have to deal with, kept it on the down low as long as possible, didn't bring any attention to it, just literally were professional. So it was like a professional bouncer where you didn't really know, no, but you knew, and you didn't really want to stir things up, but you knew that if you needed assistance, you could always go to certain ones because no matter what, not that they'd stir up problems, but if you needed assistance, they were going to be there and it was known that it would be handled. It wasn't ever a doubt when it came to those certain individuals in the lifestyle, especially in New York City, because of the way the streets were laid out at the time, because of the way the buildings were, and so on and so forth. These types, as far as the professionals in the lifestyle, where they kept it above board. They didn't allow themselves to go in certain capacities. They didn't necessarily look down on those capacities either. It was the professional dominatrixes that had their own self-conscious issues, their own issues as far as whatever they were dealing with regarding their own families whatever they were dealing with in regards of their own friends, whatever they were dealing with, even within their own selves, because don't pretend when you have a bunch of females in a competitive aspect for business, and it's only females, there are males, but let's be honest in reference to professional dominatrixes, that's no different than a beauty pageant. 
you have a group of females that are only in the competition in regards of making their money or getting their crown or whatever of whatever in comparison. And then you have those who want to ride the coattails of the little beauty pageant types where, oh, well, did this and was there and did this and so on and so forth in comparison to the professionals in the lifestyle. So the professionals in the lifestyle are the ones that do the educating, that give that so that way others can make informed decisions for themselves because they understand certain things. They're not as boisterous. They're not as out there as others would assume because you'd have to actually know them. A lot of times, especially during the New York City Enron stuff, the majority, when the Enron stuff started getting really going, the professionals kind of took several steps back because they had already given warnings. They had already put it out there that these situations were as they were. They just kind of, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I'll deal with whatever as far as whatever, but when that, that hits the fan, mm -mm. no, not gonna be in the way. Gonna be out of the way, not gonna assist in regards of any of that stuff because uh-uh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. So it got bigger and bigger because of the more amount of people who were getting in the lifestyle because it was New York City. You had people who were traveling in to New York City. You had these San Antonio current types of periodicals. As far as, oh, go here, do that, whatever. You had some of these late night television, television talk shows from word on the street as to that, letting you know where to go as far as if you we're interested in those reference in comparison. And so these situations just basically came to a head. Just became a, such an overgrown, for lack of a better word, because of the young aspects, pimple. That's what it was. And so you had all of these situations that just conglomerated together. And the LGBTQ peers had already been dealing with the epidemic from the 1980s going into the 1990s. And the strands that were from that. You had the swinging community as far as the supposed to be consensual adult lifestyle swinging community that were impacted because of these professional dominatrixes. And the swinging community, they that was, that was their breaking point because when they dealt with certain professional dominatrixes, the swinging community doesn't have a problem with the BDSM community. They have a problem with the professional dominatrix community. That's always been the thing when it comes to swingers. That's something that others haven't understood. It's always been that way because they already have the situations as far as individuals who are professional prostitutes and they constantly have to explain, no, it's not in that capacity. It's like a club, you can dance, you can, you know, you can whatever, and it's a safe place for people to not have to take someone back to a certain area to say, you know, if they over time or whatever, that's one thing. But in comparison, they're constantly fighting against the professional prostitutes because of certain viewpoints. And then on top of that, you have the professional dominatrixes, which once those got involved in the swinging community in the New York City area, because the professional dominatrixes couldn't go to some of the events regarding BDSM. It got so bad just before Enron had fully started pouring all that stuff out. So you'd hear about families, you'd hear about certain situations, and it wasn't really having to do with the elect. 
Not yet at that point, especially if you have those knowledge aspects as to the Asbury Park Press. You didn't have the families come out just yet to those situations. So, because when Enron really, really started getting going, it's because there was so many things, and it was just like a train. It started getting, you know, chugga 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 chugga, getting faster and faster and faster and faster, it was gaining speed. And once it was at a certain speed, that's kind of where it started hitting. So these professional dominatrixes, they started trying to sneak in to these swinger communities, but they weren't telling the truth. They weren't being honest that they were professional dominatrixes because all they had to do was actually acknowledge that. And a lot of the ones that were on the street that had, well, they didn't have a problem. So long as they didn't cause any problems. The second they started causing problems was the second the swinging community had massive issues in the New York City area. Again, this is the 1980s, 1990s. This is just after the 1970s. So they already are dealing with the remnants of the hippies compared to the yuppies with the hippie situation. Then you have the business aspects and you also have the Enron aspects plus the IRS. Oh, then you have the conglomerate of certain local individuals trying to cover up certain things, putting a bad name in law enforcement because of literally putting the bad names into law enforcement. And those problems right along with. So, and I think it was 1992, no, 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 no. I think it was 1993 or 1994. That was when it was over. That was the first round of some of the stuff with Enron. That just was so much. Didn't really get as well known until about 1998, 1999 for certain factors. People that were in, in the ground floor word on the street stuff, they were in the know around, from what I was told, because I wouldn't actually know, but there is the irony of my swimming, 1984. There were people that were in the know as to what was gonna occur in reference to Enron in 1984, 1983, from some of the word on the street, because they could see all of these situations. But some of, from what I was told regarding Enron and stuff like that, there were people who gave word and were like, hey, just letting you know, just here you go, just be careful because you don't know what's the the situation. Some of them didn't take it as seriously. Some did. Some freaked out. Some didn't see what the reality was and it was as it was as it went forward. So then you have essentially 1988-1989 and it really is known to essentially everyone on the street but not known. The only way you're in the know is if you know in person, face to face in person. You don't know, know certain things until the papers start printing it. The news starts reporting it because it just kept adding up one after the other, after the other, after the other. When it got to the point of certain federal situations, that was another breaking point in regards to bringing Enron out. And you had certain situations where the news was nonstop, just the kind of normal stuff. 
Instead, you could tell what's going on in the news by if they report essentially the same things. If you know how to read this, because when a news broadcasting company essentially, well, these are the crime statistics, or this is this, or in this area of government is this going on, there's these people in the Supreme Court doing this, and there's these situations as far as that. They always release it, essentially from what, I shouldn't say always, but from what I remember regarding Enron, it was essentially eh, middle of the year as to certain major situations. So that way it gave the amount of time for elected officials that were running because of the donations because they had to distance themselves from these individuals because they had to have a certain amount of time where they were nowhere near <laughs> some of these individuals because of how bad Enron had gotten. And it wasn't Enron itself. It was the individuals that were involved these people who wanted to ride coattails that wasn't for them to ride. It was these people who were taking advantage of the financial situation. It was these people who were siphoning finances out of Enron and that was where the IRS got involved. When the individuals started siphoning out of Enron, the IRS took notice like that. That was where each of them got hit by the IRX because there was no reason for anybody to be siphoning out of Enron at all. There were all these people who were just greedy, who thought that they deserved something when they didn't. Well, they got something that they deserved, that's for certain. Especially when it came to certain individuals, if you read the, the stuff associated as to how bad that went with Enron. And so while well, some people didn't think it was ever going to come to a head, word on the street during those times because some of the law enforcement were allowing, allowing certain situations, which personally I disagreed with. I let certain people know. I did not agree with it at all. You might as well just go and take care of it because there is no excuse for that. My opinion back then, but I was just a child, so what did I know? You know? I mean, I was already dealing with that by that point where, you know, well, why, are you, why are you allowing that sort of stuff to go on? You should know better. But, you know, it was as it was. There were supposedly certain others that they were whatever of whatever. My opinion was, why would you waste time? Why wouldn't you just whatever? Because once you pull one of the dominoes out, the rest comes down. It doesn't matter. That's what I didn't understand when it came to Enron as to how long it took, because it was one of those literally, and you see it if you look at the news factors as far as the Asbury Park press. You take one domino and you, done. That was it. That's how quick it went. It was, the, in my opinion, the dumbest amount of waste of time ever because realistically, they could have had everything taken care of in 1988, 1989, when I was looking at the microfiche as well as word on the street regarding stuff. It was one of those, so in 1988 and 1989, you didn't have to put everybody else through all this other stuff, but if you, like, I mean, sure, okay, fine, you got a few extra people, but really, you would have gotten them anyway. That's kind of the sad part as to how long some of the things took to get to, it was one of those, they were already gonna, whatever. They weren't gonna hide anywhere, it was the Northeast. As many pieces of technology everywhere, as many security cameras, as many of whatever, oh no. No, no, there was no excuse in my opinion as to why it took so long regarding that, but that's my personal opinion. I know that, you know, certain whatever.
It's a personal opinion of mine. I also knew a lot of people that were impacted because of that. And so I can actually speak to why. It's my personal bias because of knowing people, because of word on the street. So while some people might not have ever known certain individuals as to whatever, as a child, it was known that I was not a typical child. So I had a lot of, ironically, a lot of biological adults who would just talk with me because I wasn't the type of child who talked about pop culture. I wasn't the type of child who even cared about pop culture. Because when I was asked about movies and I brought up, you know, whatever, Disney, they would ask me, well, did you actually want to go to the movie? Not really. It wasn't something I wanted to do. I just wanted to go hang outside and stuff like that. And as soon as they found out I just wasn't that type of a child who was into that type of pop culture, I just wasn't interested in it. That was when it was just discussions. And so I'd sit with <laughs> all sorts of people because it just didn't matter to me. The pop culture wasn't important to me. It was important to other people, that's them. The Broadway stuff, it wasn't anything I was ever going to make an attempt towards. It wasn't an interest of mine. Not that I didn't see the appreciation for it. I just wasn't interested in it. Dealt with my biological sister being as she was. I didn't want to be that way. I, I, I saw what that was doing. And I didn't want to be that type of person when I grew up because I could see the way that went. I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to be the way certain other people were. It just wasn't something that was of an interest to me. And so I'd speak with who I spoke with. Whatever age, whatever discussions. And where other people, such as Whole Tenet Presbyterian Church, the individuals there had their assumptions. You know, those youth group types that thought that whatever they thought, the problems in regards to my biological mother constantly pushing in the wrong direction because I didn't ever want to do anything my biological mother wanted me to do. She didn't understand it wasn't an interest for me. She thought that just because I was good at it meant something to me. That was the problem where she wasn't paying attention. It didn't mean anything to me. I didn't want to be a part of certain things. So where it meant something to her, it meant nothing to me, which was where that divide became because every time she would do certain things and didn't seem to understand that I was not willing to be that vicarious aspect, that was her problem. Didn't matter to me at all, whatsoever, in any capacity. She stirred up needless problems in the church. As a deacon, she stirred up so many needless problems at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church just because of that type. I wasn't willing to deal with it. Stirred up a bunch of drama regarding the youth group because of her problems. Same thing when it came to Mike, just not as bad in reference to being a trustee. Patricia, on the other hand, my biological sister, the amount of needless problems that came from that was ridiculous. So there's this situation where I had one solo and everybody complained because I already had 
a bunch of lead and co-lead situations that I didn't even want to be a part of. I didn't even want to have anything to do with. That was the irony. Those people didn't ever pay attention to the fact I didn't even want to be a part of certain things. So the one thing that I actually wanted to do, where I had a solo, other people just needed to learn to shut their mouths. It's really what it boiled down to. Because where I didn't want to be involved regarding the plays, the actual singing I actually did. The handbells, that's where I actually wanted to be a part of. In comparison to the garbage my biological mother and the garbage my biological father and the garbage my biological sister continuously, needlessly got involved and I could not stand it. I refused to actually be a part of certain things after a certain point. And that was an additional part of why we moved, because I refused to try out. I told the individuals who were running the plays, I'm not doing it. I don't care. I don't care all because until those people accept their place out of my life and out of what I choose to do, I will not be a part of it. I don't care. I will take my stand. And after a certain amount of time, my biological mother tried a few things and I balked back. We moved to Illinois after that because it went around Old Tenant Presbyterian Church because I wasn't willing to be a part of certain things because she needed to understand that it wasn't acceptable at all in any capacity. So when it was brought forward regarding a babysitter from Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, that was 1998. Same thing in regards to um, Baptist Camp Lebanon situations. Don't pretend my biological mother ever cared about me truthfully. That has been a needless problem for decades. She thought she knew better when she didn't. My biological father thought he knew better and he didn't. biological sister wanted to wish she knew better and I wasn't willing to have any part of it at all. I did not care about it at all. After what I dealt with, after what I survived, I wasn't willing. There was no reconciliation available. Not if they did not meet my standards for once. If they chose to continue on the same garbage that they were doing, there was not going to be any reconciliation. There wasn't a path for them other than my way after everything I had dealt with. So I paid attention to Enron as a child, as a teenager. My biological mother thought otherwise, as far as the IRS. Proof is in the pudding. So if my biological mother actually cared about me, she wouldn't be in my way. If, and in any capacity of, in the way of my finances, in the way of my work, in the way of my book, anything, she would not be in the way. That is the only way I would ever believe my biological mother cared about me. As far as my biological father is concerned, the only way I would ever believe that he actually cared about me 
would be the exact same way. Not in my way, completely out of the way. As far as my biological sister is concerned, if I were to ever believe that she was not a problem, she would not be in my way. None of the people that she was a part of would ever cause me any needless problem. That is the only way I would ever believe that they were in my favor. If they made the choices as they did, hypothetically 2019 and 2020, that was where I was done with them. Because those people made the choices they had. After as many years and decades as to what I already dealt with, I was not willing to deal with it any further. I have had every right to take a stand against what I dealt with and anybody who would ever wish otherwise, do not pretend. Because if what I dealt with happened to you, if what my son dealt with happened to yours, if what my daughter dealt with happened to yours, if what happened to my family, what was, happened to yours, you sure wouldn't be getting in my way. You'd be out of my way. You'd be assisting that to be brought forward in every capacity of, instead of any needless problem. Instead of the situations, the way they went, in regards of downtown Austin rallies, no, 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 not that. My scuba diving should have been brought forward in 2019 in regards of in-person, face-to-face, in-person. I don't believe that any of the civilian recreational scuba divers ever actually cared about themselves because of the facts why would I bring forward that in reference to scuba diving? That health factor in reference to the other impacts. You have to give credit where credit is due in the correct capacities of. I made attempts to get medical care, not just for myself, but others. I made attempts to actually do th something about it, but that didn't occur. Those people that I reached out to did not contact me back. That's not my fault. That's their fault. There's no need for me to write about it because it doesn't matter to that level because of certain factors that actually have to occur first. And since that hasn't occurred, there's no need for me to write anything. It's just the facts. So these groupings of needless situations, the irony of the similarities to Enron, as to the New York City area, it is what it is as far as that's concerned to the state of Texas because those people chose my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister no differently than New York City. They obviously didn't pay attention to those facts. Why would they? Comparatively, what would I know? You know, that would require other people to tell the truth not just myself telling the truth. So it's been as it's been. But those people, when they chose not to invite me over because they knew what my boundaries were, they knew I told them not to come over my house as far as my house in San Antonio. They knew I told them to make an appointment. They thought that I was joking. They thought that just because 
they were my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister, that they had something special in comparison to the reality of me being the sponsor. They didn't want to pay attention to that. No differently to stuff that occurred in the tri-state area that Sunny Sonia and Joe Jose warned them about. Told them not to push that. Warned them. Why would they listen? It would make sense. Grandpa Gavit warned them, don't do that. They didn't want to listen to Grandpa Gavit in regards of what was going on with me. They didn't want to pay attention to that. They should have, as Grandma Gavit told them. They didn't want to listen to Buck Gung and Buck Poo. They caused all sorts of needless problems. And then, irony of irony, September of 2001, my biological mother at McHenry County Government Center in Woodstock, Illinois, informed me that she knew an entire floor of people <coughs> that had been capable to escape the World Trade Center bombing. Magically, but not, my son was hospitalized shortly after that. <coughs> Just to take in consideration. Where did Enron happen? Regarding this lecture of oh, New York City. What an irony. Fourteenth of May, <clears throat> two thousand twenty-two. Go to my website www.susanmeling.com <clears throat> and. Um, Check out my website, www.susanmeeling.com <clears throat> and subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Share my official YouTube channel links. And if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. <clears throat>